Hello and welcome to Hygromatic. My name is Helge Kröger. And today I would like to demonstrate the easy and fast maintenance of a heater steam humidifier from the Standard Line series. In beginning with the maintenance, the water supply must first be shut off. Then the remaining water in the steam cylinder must be pumped out. To do so, I press the control switch in position 2 and keep it pressed. The water should now have been pumped out. I can release the control switch and start with further measures. The next step is to disconnect the unit from the power supply and secure it from being restarted, to avoid injuries. So I can detach the housing cover from the unit, I have already removed these three screws. I can now remove the housing cover. As you can see, the unit has two compartments. The right compartment is the electrical compartment, with all the electronic and electrical components. The left side, the so-called steam compartment, with steam cylinder, solenoid valve, and a blowdown pump. After I've disconnected the unit from the power supply, I have to test it and make sure the power is off. To do this, I take my meter and measure the connection contacts on the main contactor. I measure each phase to phase. There is no voltage here. If your unit is equipped with a separate control voltage for the main board, as in this case, it is absolutely necessary to check that for voltage. There is no voltage here either. I can start maintenance safely. Before I can remove the steam cylinder from the unit, I must detach the hose from the water level control by loosening the hose clamp here and just pull it off. Next, I unplug the steam cylinder plug here on the housing. And now remove the clip located above the steam hose adapter. Pull the steam hose adapter up with the steam hose, a rotating and pulling movement, and then attach this clip above the steam hose adapter so it cannot slide down. Now I can use both hands to remove the steam cylinder from the unit. To do so, I grab the steam cylinder with my hands, turn it, and pull it a little, and can then remove the steam cylinder. Before we start with the cylinder maintenance, I first have to have a look at the hoses here, whether they are porous or hardened. I move the hoses and bend them to check if they are brittle and exchange them, if necessary. These hoses are available from Hygromatic by the meter or even cut to size. So, that doesn't look bad at all. Then, I check the water level control next for blockages. I remove the hose at the cylinder base here. I loosen the clamps here, pull them off, up here too. I examine the hose and check it for residue. If there is no residue, you can be sure that there is no residue in the water level control either. The water level control printed circuit board has no contact with the water. If there are any blockages that cannot be removed with a screwdriver, it is time to remove the water level control and clean it. First, I remove the hose which is connected to the water level control. Loosen the hose clip 
and then remove the hose. Next, I remove all four screws and make sure that I don't lose this grounding connection because later this cable connection must be reinstalled where it was on the shielding plate. Now I can remove the water level control from the back wall of the unit. And it's important not to remove the contact plug directly from the water level control. Instead, remove the plug from the main board up here and pull it out of the unit. I now have the water level control in my hand. Now I can remove the shielding plate and open the tank of the water level control, remove the O-ring. If there should be any deposits in this container, just take a screwdriver and then scrape off the deposits. Also, please scratch around the connection. Then take a new O-ring and please put it on the lid here. And close the container again. And then please make sure to put the shielding plate back on again. The water level control was reassembled, the pressure compensation hose was also refastened, the lower water inlet hose to the cylinder base was refastened, and the plug for the electrical connection was also attached. A further maintenance step is to clean the sieve in the solenoid valve. To do this, I loosened the nut found underneath the unit. and simply pull the sieve out of the guide with a pair of pointed or flat nose pliers. The sieve can be cleaned under running water and reinserted. Then I remove the pipe bend, which is responsible for drainage from the unit, and check it for residue. If there are any deposits in this ventilation hole, you can easily remove them with a screwdriver by pushing through this hole and cleaning it. Then I can start with the cylinder maintenance. On the upper part of the steam cylinder you can see the connections for the heater elements, in this case three heater elements, the thermo switch which triggers when the steam cylinder overheats, and the connection plug. For disassembly we use a standard slotted screwdriver, lift under the clamps, just hold on to the clamps a little so that they don't jump out and go all around. You can see the steam cylinder separating. Now you can pull the two halves apart. You can already see the mineral buildup here. That can now be discarded. I'll empty it out. To remove the coarse particles from the cylinder wall, you can use a standard scraper or spatula and remove the coarse particles. Please also clean the cylinder strainer that we see here. The holes, of course, must be clear, so the cylinder water can be pumped out completely. 
In this case, the upper half has three heater elements. If deposits are found here, then take the shaft of the screwdriver, knock on the heater elements carefully, so the coarse particles fall off. If the particles can't be loosened, you can use a descaling agent. Citric acid has worked quite well. Please don't use citric acid in concentrations above 10%. You can take a container, mix your citric acid or descaling agent here, and place the upper half of the steam cylinder into it and let it descale. Please make sure that the connectors from the heater element do not come into contact with water or acid. Then allow it to soak according to the manufacturer's instructions and then remove the steam cylinder from the acid. Here you can see a flushing nozzle which comes fitted in the flex line and is optionally available for the standard line. This must also be kept free of residue. You can also see it here from the other side. There is a small hole for the flushing nozzle. This must also be kept clear. Next, the cylinder flange o-ring is removed. I use a small screwdriver and lever behind the o-ring. I lift this o-ring out of there. The surface of the seal must be absolutely clean. I use a small cloth and clean the surface of the seal, the groove in this case. And check for possible residue, scratches and chipping. Then I take a new o-ring from the o-ring set and place it in the groove. Afterwards, the surface seal of the upper half of the cylinder must be cleaned. To do this, you can also use a cloth and wipe once all around it and make sure that there is no damage. Both cylinder halves are then ready for reassembly. As you can see here, there are two flaps. The two must touch each other when aligning the cylinder halves. You can also adjust the steam cylinder a little bit. In this case, the two flaps are not aligned with each other. You can turn these two guide parts a little on the sides. And if they sit exactly above each other, the position is correct. I will start to reattach the clamps. Turn the whole cylinder by 180 degrees and attach the second clamp. Should you ever lose a clamp, you will find three replacement clamps in the O-ring set. You don't have to attach them additionally. These three clamps are only intended as replacements. Before I fit the steam cylinder back into the unit, I'll take a look at the cable connection here. Every single screw of the cable connection I tighten. Before I can mount this serviced steam cylinder back into the unit, I have to remove this old O-ring. Now, I also have to remove the O-ring from the steam hose adapter. I use a small screwdriver and lever behind the O-ring and pull it out. Now I take a closer look at the cylinder base. If there are any deposits that I can get out with my finger, if there are a lot of deposits in there, it may be necessary to dismantle the cylinder base and clean it. I also check the inlet to the blowdown pump. If there are any blockages. If you find any blockages, you should dismantle the blowdown pump. 
The cleaning of the blowdown pump is shown in a separate video. After I have removed the two O-rings, I replace them with two new ones. I take this O-ring, make sure that there is no more residue, and place it on top of the cylinder base. Take the second O-ring and put it up here in the groove of the steam hose adapter. The easiest way is to moisten the O-rings with some water, with a little residual water from the cylinder base. Up here too, so that the steam cylinder is also very easy to install. I first put the steam cylinder into the cylinder base below. I press down slowly. And then pull off the clip, which is at the top of the steam hose adapter. And then push the steam hose onto the steam cylinder. Then I attach the steam hose adapter again with the clip, and the steam cylinder is now firmly fixed. Then I screw the hose of the water level control back onto the nozzle of the steam cylinder on top. And screw the hose clamp tight again. All that remains is the electrical wiring of the steam cylinder. And I simply plug this cable clamp into the top of the cylinder. If the sign attention hot surface points to the front, the position of the steam cylinder is correct. Now I can start a test run. I have turned the water back on and the power as well. Now I switch on the unit by pressing the control switch to position 1. Let the unit run for about 10 to 15 minutes at full steam production. And check, especially around the hose clamps, around the replaced O-rings, leaks, leakages. If there are no leakages, switch off the unit and then press the control switch again into position 2 for the blowdown pump to determine possible leaks here as well and then to intervene. If all is tight, then maintenance is done. And you can fill out the enclosed maintenance manual and reset the service interval according to our operating instructions. Finally, all you have to do is put the cover back on the unit. Please make sure that you screw it on tight. This completes the maintenance, and I thank you for watching.